Hi, my name is Dr. Anthony Lamar and I'm a cardiothoracic surgeon. Today we're going to talk about placing a chest tube. Before we get started though, let's define the conditions in which you'll place a chest tube. Now just to be clear, when I refer to it as placing a chest tube, what I'm referring to is actually taking a tube and placing it where the lungs are, the pleural spaces, whether either the right or left lung. This tube will go where the right or left lung is. Now, there are two classic conditions for placing a chest tube. Number one is if there's excess fluid around the lungs, either the right or the left. Now, fluid around the lungs is classically referred to as a pleural effusion. Now, you can get flu pleural effusions for several reasons. Number one, infection. For example, if you have a pneumonia, that can cause fluid buildup around the lungs. Number two, if there's injury to the ribs or, uh, or, or the body, you can get blood around the lungs, and that's classically referred to as a hemothorax. Unfortunately, if you have lung cancer, that can build up fluid around the lungs, or if you have a cancer, cancer somewhere else in the body, but it goes to the lungs, you can get fluid built up. That's unfortunately from cancer. Another reason why patients get fluid around the lungs is if there's an inflammatory process going on, and that inflammatory process builds up fluid around the lungs as well. So that's one common reason for chest tubes to be placed. A second reason for chest tubes to be placed is if there's air outside the lungs. Now air classically should be within the lungs, within the airway. But if there's injury to the lungs, for example with a rib fracture or from some, from what many reasons, car accident or a fall, there can be injury to the lungs and that air gets outside the lungs but within the pleural space, within the pleural cavity. What ends up happening is that air, especially if it's a lot of it, can push on the lungs. If it pushes on the lungs, it prevents the lungs from expanding and contracting and functioning appropriately, and patients can complain of shortness of breath. Another, um, another, if the air is actually very impressive and very big, it can actually also affect the heart function. If there's too much tension or pressure on the heart, the heart itself can expand or contract as well. So two common reasons to place a chest tube or tube around the lungs. Number one is if there's, a, if, if there's fluid, excess fluid, and number two, if there's actually excess air, referred to as a pneumothorax. Now, this is actually one example of the tubes that we place in patients. There's different types of chest tubes, and they're based on the, 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 the material they're made of, the thickness. This is a hard chest tube, and they're, but they're softer ones, referred to as Blake drains sometimes. They're small, they're, they, they range in size. They can go sometimes 12, 14, all the way to a 36 size chest tube. And these chest tubes have holes along the sides. And the reason why is because when you place this within the lungs, you want to maximize the amount of air and fluid that you can get out with those holes. Now, one reason why you'd place a bigger chest tube, for example, is if there was blood around the lungs. And sometimes the blood around the lungs can get really hard or clot. And if, the, if it becomes really hard and clots and big, it's sometimes hard to get through these small holes. And therefore, you'll use a bigger chest tube. So again, this tube is what I'm referring to being placed around the lungs. Now, let's review the anatomy of the body and just describe where these tubes go. So this is a model of the body here, and there's a sternum, the bone here, and coming from the sternum is the ribs. Now, when you're placing a chest tube, what you're essentially doing is taking this tube and going in between the ribs and directing the tube into the correct location. Now, there are different places where the chest tubes can be placed. It can be placed at the top of the lung, referred to as the apex, the base of the lung, it could be medial, close to the heart, or lateral, on, on the lateral side. The location that you place the chest tube is going to vary based on the clinical condition of the patient and sometimes actually on the anatomy of the patient. So for example, if you have a patient who has a pneumothorax, which is air outside of the lung, but it's at the apex or top of the lung, well then you'll direct your tube in that location. In contrast, if you have someone who has fluid that's posterior on the back of the lung, but at the base, well, you'll, choose to select, you'll select the area on the, on, the, um, on the chest to place a chest tube that's going to give you the easiest access to that location. Now, regardless of where you're going to place the chest tube within the patient, the actual procedure is the same. First, you will get, you'll get a permission slip signed, a consent form, and that's because you want to go over the risk and benefits of placing, doing the procedure, and I'll go over that shortly. Once that's out of the way, what you'll do is you'll identify um, the area of the chest where you're going to work. So you'll sterilize the skin. 
You'll drape the skin so you create a sterile environment, a sterile field, so you minimize risk of infection. And I'm not sure if I mentioned this, but placing the chest tubes can happen anywhere. You can place it in the emergency room, intensive care unit, or in the operating room. Now, once you identify a location, what you'll want to do is you'll get some anesthesia, local anesthesia, like lidocaine, for example, and what you do is you'll numb the area that, that you want to place the chest tube. Because placing a chest tube in someone who's awake can be painful. And so you really want to make sure you numb up that area very well, not only the skin, but the tissue underneath to minimize as much as possible the discomfort. Now, it's not always painful, but you really want to minimize that with local anesthesia. Once, so once again, you identify the location, you sterilize the skin. Next thing you'll do is you'll take a scalpel, you'll make a small incision to get through the skin, you use special instruments to get through the subcutaneous tissue, then you'll get in between the ribs, with, which is muscle there, you get in between the ribs, and then what you do is you'll take special instruments, you'll grab the chest tube, and you'll direct it in between the ribs into the location that you want. So once again, once you're in between the ribs, if you want it towards the apex, you'll push there, if you want it towards the base, you'll go towards the base or posterior. Once the chest tube's in the correct position, you'll secure, it with a, you'll secure the chest tube at the skin level with a suture. What you don't want to do is place the chest tube, then unfortunately the tube come right out because it's not secured. So you'll secure the chest tube at the skin site where you place the tube. Then you'll take the other end of the chest tube and connect it to a canister. That canister, otherwise referred to as a pleurovac, will pull or suck out the air or fluid. Once that's taken care of, you'll then place a dressing around the chest tube site. And then you're done. After the chest tube is secure, after the ch you're done with your procedure, you get a chest x-ray. The chest x-ray is critical because it's going to confirm that the tube is in the right location that you want. Sometimes, unfortunately, despite your best efforts, you'll try to direct it in one location, but because the tube hits lung, it can go into a different location. Or sometimes it goes in between the lung, what's referred to as the fissure, and the tubes don't often work well in the fissure because the holes, unfortunately, get obstructed or occluded, and then you can't get the air and fluid out. So the chest x-ray is going to be critical. Now, the chest tube will stay in as long as the patient needs it to, and then when, at the time that it, you're done with the chest tube, it just gets simply pulled out and you hold pressure. Now, this whole procedure can last somewhere between 15 and 20 minutes, but actually could be faster based on the anatomy of the patient. For example, if you have a very skinny patient, it could take maybe 10 minutes or less. In contrast, if you have someone who's very muscular or obese, it could be difficult to get in between the ribs and get, and get the tube in the correct position. Also, if the patient's previously had surgery there or an inflammatory process, sometimes when you get the tube in there, it's difficult to get the tube in the right location because of the tissue, either scar tissue or something else. I mentioned before there are risks and benefits of doing the procedure. It can be the risk include infection, bleeding. Sometimes you can actually injure the lung. Sometimes you can actually injure the heart. These are pretty rare, but important to review with the patient. Okay, this is a brief description of placing a chest tube. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. Thank you very much.